Hi, it's Neil with Italia Autos and welcome to my buyer's guide on the Alfa Romeo Giulietta, specifically more about the 2 litre diesel variant. Now, if you do like Alfa Romeos, please subscribe to my channel because I do all sorts of uh, buyer's guides, reviews, repairs, projects and things like that. So if you do like Alphas, it will be uh, something you'll hopefully enjoy watching. Now, please like and comment in the video below once you finish watching it. The Giulietta has been designed as the Alfa Romeo 147 replacement. It was first debuted in 2009 at uh, some motor shows and then it was released in the UK in 2010. It's still being made now. Uh, it has had a couple of facelifts since. It's mainly, uh, the first facelift was in 2014 when they introduced the Uconnect into the car where you can have a, a better sat nav and um, a little screen inside the car. And then there was another update in 2018, if I remember rightly, uh, where you got a, a slightly facelifted interior and you got facelifted uh, front and rear bumpers and also different kit was made available. So the car's been going for nearly 10 years now. Um, it'll be approaching its 10th birthday in 2020. They are a fairly reliable car. You don't tend to get many major problems with them as long as you're purchasing a well-looked-after car. Uh, as I will go through shortly, there are some, some regular faults with them. Um, nothing tremendously major um, on the outside of the car. Uh, it's mainly to do with the engine and the, uh, the gearbox that you get a lot of the, uh, the, the major faults with them. But the exterior and interior, not many uh, problems at all. They are a very good, uh, reliable car. And also pretty good looking for the... Uh, for a, a five-seater uh, C-segment car. Okay, start with the front of the car. The grills are quite susceptible to getting knocks because they are quite prominent on the front of the car. So you may find the odd um, grill vent falls off and goes missing. You can buy a set of replacement grill vents. Uh, I do believe they're not too expensive to get hold of. I think they're available on eBay, to be honest. The main fog lights, they do tend to start to corrode at the bottom and sort of start to rust. This one's not, not too bad. Let's show you the other one. See that's starting to crow a little bit there. Um, I'm not sure how much a replacement one is. You're probably looking between 40 and 60 pounds uh, for a new one, probably about uh, 20 to 30 for a used one. Uh, regular problem with the headlights. They do have daytime running lights. They are controlled by an ECU um, and they are LED. Uh, but I am seeing quite a few problems now with them stopping working and unfortunately it's not just a case of replacing a bulb um, there is an ECU on the bottom of the headlight which controls the uh, the LEDs and that tends to be failing whether it's due through water ingress or just dirt or something like that so uh, you need to look out and make sure that your side lights are working correctly they can also be turned off in the menu inside the car so if you are having a problem with them and they're flickering uh, you can turn them off uh, within the menus uh, on the steering wheel stalks. Onto the side of the car now, door handles tend to be a big problem. Uh, either the covers fall off and go missing or you can the hinges break here. Um, they are relatively straightforward to change. You don't have to take the door card off on to get these changed. They do literally just pull out but they are quite fiddly to uh, change. They're about £65 for a replacement door handle and you can suffer with that on drivers and passenger side. Uh, the rest of the exterior is quite reliable to be honest you don't tend to uh, get many problems uh, on the exterior of these other than trim and fit make sure you've got no lack of peel and there's no accident damage make sure all your your panels fit correctly um, on to the rear end now you can suffer with lights not working the boot release not working properly uh, wiper not working properly um, that can be down to the fact that the wiring loom in the tailgate can start to chafe and cut. You've got wiring loom in here on both sides of the car and they can, with, with regular movement of the bonnet opening and closing, they can start to break and chafe and short things out and make weird things happen to the car. So just make sure that everything's intact here, it's not been messed with and make sure that all the lights work because you can get quite a few uh, weird problems if uh, wires are touching where they shouldn't be. On some models I have also known there be a problem with the antenna. The actual antenna itself here can start to fail. Uh, they are relatively straightforward to change, just a big nut holding it in place uh, and a couple of uh, wiring connections you can get to it via the uh, headline and you don't need to do much on that. So they are quite straightforward to change. On to the interior now. 
Everything is built to a fairly high quality. Uh, all the switches and dials do have a nice, nice feel about them. Uh, the seats are normally uh, either half leather, cloth or full leather. This is a Veloce or Lusso spec car, so you do have the half leather interior in it. Uh, now onto the regular faults that you get with it. The door cards do suffer with this pull handle snapping off. Normally snaps about there, so it makes it really difficult to open the car. Um, these are actually plastic welded to the door card. Alpha don't sell this handle by itself, so you do have to... Uh, buy a whole door card to replace it and they are not cheap from Alpha. I think they're around four or five hundred pounds for a, a door card. I have seen them on eBay for around 150 pounds for a used one but uh, I'm sure if you shop around you should be able to save a little bit of money on that. Um, this plastic trim here is quite delicate so if it ever needs to be removed for any reason to remove the door card to change the door motor or anything like that um, that can break quite easily so just make sure that that's in good condition. You will also get some wear on the plastic here where people with rings and stuff grab the door but again that's that's only minor um, you do suffer with some wear on the steering wheel uh, mainly here like on this one uh, it's just like a, pl a plasticky rubberized material and it easily scratches off but with a little bit of uh, you could, a little bit of wrap really you could put some wrap over it and cover it or you can get some plastic dip and just repaint it again it's, it's not an expensive repair or you can always uh, pick yourself up a, a second hand steering wheel and replace that Onto the seats now, they are a good quality seat, very comfortable, you can easily uh, spend hours sitting in this car while you're driving, they do have a decent amount of adjustment on them. Uh, they are fairly reliable seats, but I do know that some of the driver's seat bolsters stitching does tend to come apart every now and again, so just make sure that that's in good condition, and you will get a little bit of wear on the leather edge there, but again that can be recoloured. The leather is pretty good quality, uh, it's not the, uh, the cheap quality leather that you do get in some uh, of the other makes of cars so it does hold up pretty well. Uh, I've also seen a few instances where the rear seat back does tend to bend a bit um, but that's mainly due to a large owner um, reaching over into the back for some reason quite a lot so just make sure that the seat back's not twisted but again I haven't come across that very often so uh, I wouldn't really worry about that one too much. The centre console storage box is quite flimsy so sometimes the hinges can break or the rubber stops can go missing in here so the uh, the cubby hole doesn't fit quite correctly as you can see this one isn't the best it's a little bit low at the back there but uh, it's all uh, all in place and working fine these early radios cd players in the car are, are fairly reliable don't come across many problems with them there are the newer uconnect versions uh, to go for where you get the screen there again they're quite simple uh, not really come into many problems with them yet you do also have something called uh, Blue and Me, which is like your Bluetooth to connect your phone to on here. You can sometimes suffer with the, the, the ECU, which is behind the dashboard here. Um, that can sometimes fail. Uh, and they're around 100, 150 pounds to replace the uh, ECU. But again, don't come across that too often. So just make sure you can get your phone to pair without any problems and you can stream music you can make phone calls without uh, any issues at all. I have come across a few over the uh, recent years where the, uh, the handbrake mechanism does tend to break. Um, not expensive, not difficult to repair. They are replaced from inside the car, so you don't have to take everything off the underneath of the car like you did with some earlier Alphas. You just need to take your centre console out to be able to uh, get to all the bolts and uh, replace everything. Um, other areas of wear, you, you get your steering wheel. Um, you do get a little bit of wear on here. As you can see, this is going a little bit. I haven't seen many. Um, but the, uh, the the plastic material, rubberized material, does tend to come off. Uh, but you can get some uh, replacement dials quite easily. When starting your car, make sure that you get your, your needle swoosh, your fuel, fuel gauge works, and you get no errors on this dashboard here. Uh, you will also want to check and make sure that the coil light goes off within a few seconds. You also get your airbag warning lights go off within a few seconds as well. Now once your glow plugs have uh, been warmed up, the vehicle should start within a couple of seconds quite easily with no spluttering or uh, any odd noises or anything. You want to just make sure that all the uh, engine warning lights do illuminate before the car started and do turn off once the car is running. That flashing of the clock is just where it's just not set at the moment, I need to reset that. In these cars, if you do have a amber airbag warning light illuminated, you do get the option to turn these off within the menu. If 
I can find the one which says airbag. Passenger airbag, there you go. Look, you can turn that off and that will then make the dashboard light illuminate. So if you get to the car, you go, I know it's got an airbag fault. It hasn't, it's just been turned off. Uh, and it automatically turns off with a flat battery as well. So you do need to uh, turn that back on uh, to get rid of the warning light. You can also turn off the daytime running lights within this menu as well, uh, which is just there. And you can just turn those on and off by just doing that there. But generally they are a very comfortable and nice place to sit and be. Uh, there aren't many regular issues with these cars. They are quite reliable. They are a nice place to be. And they do hold together pretty well with not many uh, rattles or knocks. Oh, one other thing with the interior is these gear knobs, they're not the best. They do tend to um, lose their chrome covering. So uh, if it is uh, peeling, um, it is a regular problem. But uh, you can get aftermarket gear knobs for them without any issues at all. There is another little annoying problem down here. Um, the space between the clutch pedal and this side trim piece isn't very big. So if you've got larger than sort of a nine size feet, it's very difficult to get your, your foot comfortable next to the clutch pedal. This bit of trim is removable. As you can see, there is plenty of room behind it. So the reason um, there's not much clutch room is just the design fault, really. You can remove this piece of trim and, and happily keep it off all day long and it won't uh, get in your way then and you can got somewhere to store your foot. Now, another little regular problem underneath here, your interior ventilation fan is hiding up there and it is very common for failing. So in order to get to it, you've either got to remove the dashboard and the steering column to pull it out or you need to remove the pedals. So that can be quite an expensive fix because it's quite time consuming removing everything out of there. Um, I do see it happen, I've probably seen it happen about four or five times on cars in the last few years. So it, it is sort of one of the, the very few regular problems on the uh, Giulietta. So do check that your fans are working properly when you are test driving the car. The vehicle also has stop start. That's the stop start button there to turn it on and off. You do need a good battery in the vehicle for it to work properly. It's the same with all stop start uh, vehicles. You do need a, a good voltage for it to work properly. You've also got the uh, DNA system in here. The uh, D is for the fast mode. It gives you a little bit uh, extra power normal mode and then you've got all weather down the bottom which is good to use in snow it sort of it reduces the uh, the power and the acceleration just to uh, give you a little bit uh, steady driving when it's uh, wet or snowing outside so right let's move on to the engine and we'll talk about uh, engine and gearbox problems this is the alfa romeo 2 litre jtdm engine it's a very reliable engine nowadays to be honest the it used to be the the 1.9 which was the engine before this and Alpha seem to have done pretty well uh, and made it quite a reliable uh, unit now. Everything is very easy to access on this engine. There's nothing particularly uh, difficult to get to for a competent mechanic. You've got your fuel filter here. Your oil filter is down at the back of the engine there. That's the most awkward part to do because it does get quite messy unless you know how to do it right. Uh, engine itself, let's take the cover off. It's all reliable. You've got your injectors here, your fuel rail here, uh, your manifold behind there. Um, one of the regular problems I do see quite a lot with these engines is the EGR cooler, which is here. A big sort of round plastic thing which cools the uh, exhaust gases as they go around the engine. Uh, and they do tend to leak. They are quite expensive from Alpha. I think they're over £100. But if you buy one from uh, Vauxhall Astra or Vauxhall Vectra, they are sort of 99% the same part. And they do fit in exactly the same way. And they are probably half the price. They are quite fiddly to change. I'd probably say allow uh, sort of two hours labour to get one of those changed. But uh, they're, they're not that bad. Uh, these engines also suffer with EGR valves blocking and sticking. And they can present uh, quite a lot of problems if they are, are not noticed or not found. Uh, it's just down the back of the engine here. They're about £100 to uh, replace. They're not that easy to block off like they are on the earlier engines. But you can get them mapped out if needed. Cam belts need to be changed every 48,000 or four years, whichever comes sooner. They are relatively straightforward to uh, change. You do just have to take a few things out of the way to access them. Uh, expect to pay around £300 for a cam belt change on one of these engines. As I said earlier, the battery in this car is a start-stop battery. 
so they are a little bit more expensive than normal batteries this one has just been replaced in this car actually and it cost me I think around £100 for the battery now the only sort of Achilles heel of these Giuliettas is the gearboxes they're, they're not very strong they do tend to suffer with whining uh, in third and fourth gear so when you are test driving it just make sure that uh, the gearbox is nice and quiet and the gear change is nice and easy to do you can also suffer with worn gear linkages so the gear change will be a bit sloppy or difficult to select but again they're not too expensive to replace the turbos on these vehicles are fairly reliable you do get some go every now and again um, but they're not uh, that expensive to get refurbished and exchange on the vehicle if you're looking over a vehicle and you need to check the vehicle's identity you've got the VIN plate here with all the information on it also should be on the windscreen and also behind the windscreen in a little sticker there and it should also be on a little plate inside the car just down underneath here and that's where the uh, chassis number is again so there we go that's the uh, engine and the gearboxes on the car now I'm sure there are, are more faults that people uh, will find but there's no uh, major issues that uh, normally happen to them they are fairly reliable engines so now we'll get the vehicle onto the ramp and we'll talk about the suspension uh, wheels and the underside of the car if we get any regular problems there again there's not much to report underneath here they are fairly reliable you can sometimes suffer from anti-roll bar links failing uh, again they're only a cheap part to replace rear distant pads uh, in fact, distant pads in general on these cars are quite expensive if you want a reasonable brand. Um, you're looking at sort of uh, 400 quid to replace the distant pads all the way around. Uh, I was quite uh, shocked when I uh, had a few quotes recently to repair a customer's car. The rear shockers can be quite delicate. They are quite thin and flimsy, so you can, uh, if you hit a, a big pothole, you can bend things quite easily. So just make sure that uh, it is driving in a nice straight line. Uh, exhausts, again, reasonably easy and cheap to repair. They come in three sections. You've got the rear box where you can either have a twin tail pipe on this one. The center exhaust pipe is the most susceptible to rust. As you can see, this one is starting to go. It's not too bad. It's only surface rust. Um, but it is just literally a straight through pipe, so not that expensive to replace. Uh, rust on these cars is fairly good to be honest there's no major issues with them that I've seen yet uh, I would imagine that, that they're not too old um, you will get some little bits of rust starting on it on a car of this age but generally uh, I don't tend to find very many rust spots on Giuliettas unless they've been uh, badly repaired in the past um, front subframes fairly good no issues with those they don't tend to rust very much um, the uh, Alpha seem to have learned their lesson after the, uh, the Alpha 159 subframes as you can see that's all fairly uh, rust free underneath there. Uh, wishbones are quite common for going. You'll get squeaks as you're going over bumps and knocks. Uh, normally it's lower wishbones which go. It is only a single wishbone set up on these cars so they uh, don't need two like on uh, most of the other Alphas. They are fairly straightforward to replace. The hardest part is uh, getting the ball joint out of here. But again, they're not too expensive so uh, it's not at the end of the world if you do see a car and it does need a wishbone or two on it. Just check for even tyre wear on the vehicle, um, on front and rear, just to make sure that nothing's out of line or, or wearing, uh, or just factoring getting a, a wheel alignment done on the vehicle. Now there's not much that actually goes wrong underneath the uh, undersides of uh, Giuliettas. They do have electric power steering. Uh, there's electric power steering motor on the uh, power steering rack up there. Um, they do sometimes misbehave, but again, nothing uh, too serious or that I happen to uh, come across very often. All right, there you go. There's my guide on the Giulietta. If you found it useful, please uh, subscribe and comment below and also uh, like the video. Thank you very much for watching and see you again.